Hi, I'm JD, and what we're going to be doing, it's actually nighttime right now, but we're, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to do, do uh, Gaussian elimination. That's our system of equations, so if you would pause the video and see if you can try to do this one on your own. Alright, your first step when you do Gaussian elimination is you simply write it as an augmented matrix. Augmented matrix is you just take, take each of these and you just look at the coefficients. So in this column would be the coefficients of the x's, second column coefficient of the y's, coefficient of the z's, and then everything on the other side, the equal sign, everything that doesn't have a variable. So do that. So for the first equation, you have 1, negative 2, negative 1, draw your line, and then you have 2. For your second equation, you have 2, negative 1, positive 1, 4, then you have negative 1, right, because that's what's in front of the x, positive 1, negative 2, and then negative 4. All right, what you want to do, let's kind of have a game plan. So what you want to do is you want to get the diagonal you want all of these to be ones now in the lower triangle of the matrix everything below that you want those to be zeros now once you have that you can do back substitution and the back substitution would be easier to solve than it is in this form. That's the whole point of doing Gaussian elimination. So you want things to, you want these to be ones, but you want to be these uh, to be zeros. So you start by eliminating the two and the negative one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two steps at once, two row transformations at the same time. And I want to change row number two and row number three. Now, I'm going to add it to row number one, but I need to eliminate it. So I need to multiply, if I'm getting rid of this, I need to multiply this by negative two. So I have negative two times row number one. And if I just simply add these two guys together, that's going to cancel out. So I'm going to add row 1 to row 3. All right. Now when you do this, just take it really slow and just take it one step at a time. So I'm going to look at this. Well, all of these stay the same, so that's 1... 1, negative 2, negative 1, 2. This is a negative 2, right? Negative 2 times 1 plus 2 gives me a 0. So that's a 0. Negative 2 times a negative 2 gives me a positive 4. Positive 4 plus a negative 1 positive 3. Again, negative 2 times negative 1 gives me a, yeah, positive 2 plus 1, that's a 3. Negative 2 times 2, yeah, it's a negative 4. And then negative 4 plus 4, yeah, that's a 0. Then do the same thing. Well, you're going to add, right, those two 
rows together. So what's 1 plus negative 1? 0. What's 1 plus a negative 2? Negative 1. What is negative 2 plus a negative 1? That's right, it's negative 3. And what's 2 plus a negative 2? Yeah, it's going to be negative 2. All right. So, so far I'm pretty good. I want, ro I want ones here. So it's a little easier to do row transformations if you get this one to be a one. To eliminate uh, this element here in row number three. So let's do that. I'm going to multiply row number two, and I can multiply it by any number I want. This is another one of those row transformations. And I'm going to multiply it by one third. When I do that, both row number one and row number three stay the same. So that's one, negative two, negative one, positive two and then all of these change. So 0 times uh, 1 third is 0. 3 times 1 third is 1. 3 times, or sorry, 1 third times 3 is going to give me what? Yeah, it's going to be number 1. And then what's 1 third times 0? Yeah, it's just 0. And then is row 3 changing? No, it stays the same. And 0 negative 1, negative 3, negative 2. All right, your next step is you want to eliminate this guy right here, right? This is a 1, so it's almost there. All I need is to get, make this a 1 and that a 0. But before I do that, I have to make this a 0 with Gaussian elimination. So I'm going to simply just add... I'm going to take transforming row number three, and I'm going to add row two to it. All right, when I do that, row number one is staying the same. Row two stays the same. Row 3 changes. Row 3 is, I'm going to add these two guys together. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus a negative 1 is 0. 1 plus a negative 3 is negative 2. And then 0 plus negative 2 gives me negative 2. Then I want 1's here. So I want a 1 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one half, a negative one half, and multiply it to row three. So row one stays the same, row two is going to uh, stay the same, and row three is going to change. So that's going to be one, negative two, negative one, two, this is 0, 1, 1, 0. It's going to be 0, because, right, because negative 1 half times 0 is just 0. Negative 1 half times this 0 is 0. Negative 1 half times a negative 2 is a positive 1. Good job. And what's negative 1 half times negative 2? Yeah, it's just going to give you a positive 1. All right, so what you're going to do next is some back substitution. I'm going to keep this here for reference. All right, so I'm going to erase these. Uh, hopefully you keeping up. Uh, if not, you can always pause the video, go back a little bit, pause, 
rewrite some of these things. The key is this guy right here. So I'm going to erase all of that except for that guy. problem. Alright, so you have that. So this right here is the same as the top. So it's x minus 2y minus uh, z equals 2. And then you have here this is zero signifies that the variable variable is gone so there's no x here so it's just y plus z and it's going to give you zero and then z equals one so let me erase this then all you do is just back substitution. You know what z is. So z, you plug into here, right? You get y plus one equals zero. So y equals negative one. Here you're just plugging in. I'll start by just writing the whole thing. So I have I don't know what my x is. I know what my y is. My y is negative 1. My z is a 1. So I'm plugging that in. So then I just solve for x. Negative 2, negative 1, that becomes a plus 2. So that's x plus 2 minus 1 equals 2. This is a plus 1, x plus 1 equals 2. So then x equals 1. Alright, so my solution is x, y, z, right, because it's a point x is 1, y is negative 1, your z is a positive 1. Again, I'm erasing it. You can always go back and copy it. Your last and final step is you want to plug that, that was, those values in to the original problems to see if it works. If it works for all three, therefore it's a solution. So you already tested this one. That was one of the other equations. So you have 2, 1, minus negative 1, plus 1. And you want to see if that equals 4. And if it equals 4 and it satisfies this one as well, then it's a solution. So this is 2 plus 1 plus 1 equals 4. That's right. Alright, so let's try the last one. So you have negative plus negative 1 minus 2 parentheses 1 equals a negative 4. Alright, you just do the workout. So you have negative 1 minus 1, minus 2, and you're asking yourself, does that equal negative 4? So negative 2, that's what negative 1 minus 1 is, minus 2, yeah, and that's going to be negative 4. So that works out. So that's your solution. 1, comma, negative 1, 1. And that's it.